Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you some basic oil pastels techniques. Well, at least that's how I use them. You can copy and paste or you can even develop new techniques on your own. So the first thing you're going to need is ideally an oil pastel pad. This is from Parubins. Oil pastels are not picky at all, so any type of paper which is thicker than 90 GSM should be fine. Of course, you can also apply oil pastels on canvas or wood or even glass if you have good one. Second essential thing is washi tape, a lot of washi tape. And the most important thing is going to be oil pastels. Here I choose the Panda Art Vitical set, student grade quality, pretty inexpensive. And they fall under the category harder oil pastels. If you are new to oil pastels and need an overview what to buy, I recommend you check this video out. Some techniques which I'm going to show you require softer oil pastels, so I also choose an inexpensive one, which is the Paru Beans. The Kua Lux or any other Chinese oil pastels are also good alternatives if you just use them for practice. Let's start with the very first technique, which is a blending. There are various ways how you can blend oil pastels. Personally, I like to use the sticks themselves to blend together so I can get the most vibrancy out of the oil pastels. You can use a Q-tip or blending stump or a paper towel to blend, but keep in mind that you're going to rip off the first layer of your oil pastels with those tools and the colors can look flattened out a bit afterwards. This technique is often used to create a smooth transition or gradient. I personally use them to blur certain part of the drawing or the background. Don't forget to put a heavy layer first to blend, otherwise it just looks patchy when the oil pastels are hard like the Panther one. And to clean your oil pastel, you just need to wipe off with the paper towel, and that's it. Besides blending them directly, I like to use my finger, because the oil on your skin also helps the smearing a little bit. But for me, it is more fun with softer oil pastels, like the Parubin ones, than hard ones because the pigments are easier to drag across the paper. If you want to keep your finger clean, use gloves or use a regular brush and apply a little oil to blend. Here I use linseed oil which I also use for my oil paint. Please use thick paper and as little oil as possible or brine your paper with a layer of acrylic or gesso before proceeding or else the oil will seep through the paper. As you can see here, it is much easier to blend with softer oil pastels and the gradient looks much more smoother. When using very soft oil pastel like this one, you can apply a thin layer first and then blend. This will look awful when the oil pastels are hard. Never do it. Another alternative is mixing the desired color beforehand, just like you would normally do with your oil paint. Here I use cold pressed watercolor paper. This has just too much texture for my taste. Normally I would use my favorite paper which is the Clefontaine paper mixed media to use with my oil pastels. It is thick enough and the texture of the paper is not too rough but not too smooth either.
The next technique is dotting, which is the most time consuming in my opinion. I've not seen many videos where this technique is used alone. Most of the video I've seen so far, the drawing are more towards realism. And I like this technique because I am more for impressionism or expressionism. If you have to draw like leaves or trees, this one is just perfect and depends on the effect that you want to create or your preferences, you can use soft or harder oil pastels. Me personally, I like harder ones more because with very soft ones, the colors almost blend and mix on their own. Next is also a very fun technique with a little more blending, scrap fiddle. Basically, you apply a few layers and in the end scrap off the last layer so that the layers underneath can be revealed. This can create really cool effects and you can use almost everything to scrap off. Here I use a palette knife and later a toothbrush to create some grass texture. When using this technique, I find a little bit hard to blend which color to put where first. This is one of the techniques that I want to improve more in the future. If you like more abstract or expressive style, maybe you might like this technique, which is stamping or stancing. With this one, you can pretty much freestyle. There is no the right way to do it. Just be creative. Grab anything and try out everything. You can apply the pastels on different materials, or you can use anything underneath the paper and make some prints. You will be amazed how the result turned out. This is also very therapeutic, you don't have to blend like scrappy dough, and every time I use it, I just completely shut down any thoughts and let my emotion flow. I am not good at abstract work, but this technique let me explore different kind of texture, and I really enjoy it. It makes abstract thinking less intimidating for me. The next technique is also self-explaining. You just have to experiment with different type of strokes. Here again, it does not matter if you work with hard or very soft oil pastels. Just use something which is more suitable for your preferences or your style of working.
Next, we move on to impasto, which is my least favorite technique. I have to be honest, out of all the techniques, I really suck at this one. And for this technique, you need very soft oil pastels like the Paul Rubin's one. If you use similar oil pastels to the Pentel, you're going to be very frustrated. This technique eats a lot of oil pastels. So if you use Cendelier for this dye, I can guarantee you will be broke in no time. This dye is very popular in Asia, I guess that's why most of the Asian oil pastels have very soft texture. And here you can see I fade pretty hard, but honestly I didn't care because it's part of the process and I think you might get tired of all the wonderful perfect paintings out there and it takes balls to put something imperfect on the internet, so I just wanted to be cool. And there is a point where I should stop smudging around but I can't help because it's so fun to get it all messy. I think that's also the reason why I don't use this technique a lot because of my playful nature. You also have to take special care when it comes to storing pieces using this technique because the texture can be destroyed and flattened out. So just put it in a pretty frame and hang it on the wall is the best way to store them. And don't forget to vanish or use a fixative over your drawing. Um, I recommend Cinelia fixative because it's the best one that I've used so far. Your drawing will look like a painting or oil painting afterwards. The last technique is masking. As you know, oil and water do not mix together so you can apply oil pastels on the area where you don't want the water to get in. This is actually not the right paper for it, but uh, you get the general idea of how this technique works. Same with gouache or acrylic, you can also do a um, underpainting by applying watercolor, gouache or acrylic first, and then put oil pasta over to make the color more intense. It also gives you different interest in texture and effect. Oil pasta is actually a very cooperative medium. I hope after watching all the techniques that I show you, you will fall in love with this medium as I do, or at least not hate it because I feel like a lot of people are still traumatized by oil pastels in their school days because they use the wrong oil pastel which are more suitable for kids and then got frustrated when the work did not turn out they wanted it to be, or they cannot use the technique that they normally use with other medium but every medium requires different techniques and I promise you once you know how to work your oil pastels you are going to collect them as crazy as I am and they are very convenient to use you don't need fancy paper like watercolor or gouache or a lot of tools like oil and acrylic for those who like hyper realism it can take time to master it with oil pastels and the bigger the size, the easier it gets to work hyper-realistically. But if you like something more towards impressionism or expressionism and want that fancy oil paint look, oil pastels are just perfect for that purpose and you can work very loosely, but it's totally up to you.
So if you find this video helpful, please give a thumbs up. Feel free to comment if you have questions or anything to add to help other people getting along with oil pastels. Share to anyone who might need help and subscribe to my channel for more content. I would very appreciate it. And I'm working towards the 500 subs so I can finally review the Marco Master Tribute set. If you don't know what it is, it is a very beautiful green pencil set. Marco made those pencils after being inspired by the masters like Monet, Van Gogh, Degas, so definitely a collector item. And that set has been on my wish list for a very long time, but if you have watched my other art supply collection videos, you know that I already have a lot of coloring pencils. My goal for this year is buy less and use more, so I'm trying to limit my purchase for 2023. So no buying until I have reached certain goals. So if you want to hear my opinion about that set, make sure that you subscribe, especially those who like oil-based coloring pencils. Because in most videos I've watched so far, the Master Tribute was reviewed by someone who works more with wax-based coloring pencils. So it might be interesting for you to hear different opinions before you buy anything. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for taking your time and I hope you will be with me in other videos as well.